Good? Okay. All right, well, welcome everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. I know we still might have one or two more people join us, but uh, you're here. We got uh, quite a few folks online. So thank you so much uh, for being joining us online, joining us in person. First class of the autumn 22 season. It's the equinox. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> That's right. Wow, celebrate the seasons and uh, yeah, find that balance, find that flow in, uh, in what we have and to offer the, the abundance of, of, of autumn. So tonight we have a very special guest, uh, Kurt Kelly. Welcome, Kurt. Thank you. Yeah, you. He may, he'll share a little bit about himself. And specifically, we're going to get into the topic of earthing or to be grounded, right? What does that mean? What are the benefits? How can we do it, you know, naturally, practically, uh, and all the rest? So maybe to start us off, um, give us, I'm just going to grab some more chairs for folks, but sure. uh, in kind of a word or two, what is earthing? What, what is grounding? Mm -hmm. And what are, the, what are the benefits that we get? Well, it's, um, thanks. Thanks again for having me here. Um, so earthing in the, in the, first of all, has anybody, I'm assuming everybody's kind of heard the concept of, of earthing. Has anybody experienced earthing first off? Yeah, a few, okay. So the earthing is just, it's super basic and super simple. And I'll try to keep it as simple as possible, um, but it's, it is the act of physically touching the earth in some way or another, whether you're swimming in the ocean, whether you're walking on grass, whether you're, um, anything like that just just making hugging a tree physically touching the earth um, or a part of the earth and, um, and the reason we're here is just to kind of learn about the benefits of doing that because um, there is a ton of benefits and I'm still learning myself um, and just what it can do um, but you for have the to human admit, body it's kind of funny that you know we even have a <laughs> a science around like yeah. the benefits yeah, yeah, yeah. of touching the earth yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We all we all know it when we feel it, when we experience it, and uh, great science is there to back it up. So absolutely. we'll get into that too. Um, first of all, does anybody here? I was just going to do a little. Um, does anybody here? Is, is anybody sitting in pain right now? Yeah. Just anybody else? A couple. A couple. Okay. Okay. And um, I was just going to for a few. Is it okay if I ground you right now for the for the time? And and would you be okay with that? For the four of you, I guess. Okay. You'll get grounded. <laughs> well, you're okay. All right. All right. Um, now that I, I may have uh, overpromised and underdelivered here, I have. Yeah. So this is this gets into one of the the benefits right away is dealing with pain with inflammation. Uh, earth is actually one of the best sources uh, for. I don't know how deep you went into it, but. Uh, the idea of, of electrons is, yes. is kind of the primary. Can we call that a nutrient? Is that is like a physical nutrient or is this just a life force? How do you yeah. describe what is the earth offering to us? Well, the best way that I've heard it and what makes sense to me uh, was the late Dr. Sinatra. And he said, um, you know, there's, we have free radicals. I think everybody, you know, free radicals, the, the inflammation, the, the positive charge, and we have antioxidants, which we want uh, their negative charge and the antioxidants are what are really good for our bodies in simple sense. And the way that Sinatra says is that when you touch the earth, the earth is a battery, it's full of electrons, it's negative charge. And you, as soon as you make physical contact, you're taking handfuls of antioxidants. That's the simplest way that I've heard it. And it's the, just the best way, the best way that I can explain it. So it's essentially when you touch the earth, it's just, you're just getting all those benefits. Um, you can just think of it in. as, just think of it as, a, as an inflow of antioxidants into your body. And that's going to um, start reducing inflammation. That's going to start, uh, well, and even from there, that's the main one. And then you'll see a huge amount of benefits from that alone. But, yeah. So we're going to talk about, uh, gonna, yeah, I'm you can get just, that set up. Um, you know, obviously there is the natural way to connect with the earth, which is to be outside, you know, to be barefoot, to swim in the ocean, you know, these types of things. And, it, and it's why it feels so darn good, right? We are literally plugging into the earth's energy and receiving this kind of inflow of electrons that will get more and more into the benefits. And then there's also 
the practical way to do it. Uh, and so Kurt's gonna be sharing some technology here uh, that he works with to kind of tap ourselves into the earth when we're not connected to the earth. Because you know this is one of the things about modern human lifestyle. Uh, we've developed lifestyles and practices where we're more disconnected. So what uh, Kurt's doing right now is just kind of setting up some technology, which we'll talk about. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, that is allowing a few select people in this moment to receive those free electrons from the earth, to become grounded, even though we're inside, we've got rubber soles on our feet, you know, we're insulated in that way. All right. No, it's a really good question. So can, you know, how can you be grounded? And the question was, you know, is it only through your feet? And the answer is no. Any which way that you are touching the earth, uh, it was even uh, kind of give an example to me, uh, I was reading on the website there uh, about some of this kind of information. And, you know, we have sources where we can ground in our home, for instance, you know, pipes, copper pipes. So as soon as you even touch the water that's coming out of a pipe, you're getting grounded. So a shower, how good do you feel in the shower, right? Yeah. Part of that is because you're actually getting grounded. And those, are best ideas. those are best ideas in the shower. And I will say now it's a little trickier because some of the newer homes are, are with uh, the plastic pipes. So it's a little oh, bit trickier. Right, interesting. But, so, um, but anyways, that's kind of the fun part is um, seeing how you feel and then whatnot. Baths are really good. Sometimes you'll need just a little trickle of water into the bath to don't waste water. But anyways, because if it is plastic pipes, then um it's not as conductive not as, as so copper. anyways so copper anybody have an old home here you can know their copper pipes yeah, cold yeah. water is is right connected to the uh to the earth so just you can touch the pipe or just run a little trickle of cold water um and it works really well yeah okay two sorry one more second here yeah totally all right as you yeah go ahead Oh sure, you're you wanting you're getting plugged into the grid here. No. <laughs> <laughs> so right. so th this is what Kurt's doing, and we'll 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 get to this in just a second here. Uh, but you know, those that are getting plugged in are curious as to what's going on. So uh, we'll we'll it'll all be revealed and explained in a moment. Yeah, and I just want to invite uh, those of you online. You can see all your comments, all your questions. So make it interactive. Type in some comments anytime uh, that anything comes up, and and I'll repeat all the questions that happen in in the room as well, so you hear that too. Yeah. Uh, one more. Sorry, I don't have enough cords. That's fine. Okay. Okay. And then and I just want to demonstrate. Sorry. I need this report to demonstrate. So I can only do the three right now. Sorry. All right. All right. So I should explain what I'm doing. Sure. I guess and kind of how um or well, however we want to do that now or yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit more about grounding. We'll, we'll get to this. Like I mentioned, there's the natural way to ground. Um, and then there's a practical way to ground. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about more. Uh, wait, right. We don't need to go on. Don't need to. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Earthing. How did you first uh, come about this idea of you know, the power of the earth, the healing benefits of the earth? And, and what have you personally noticed in your life and yeah. people that you work with? Ah, it's so. Uh, the, the longer story of it, um, or the roundabout story of it, is always been interested in, in health. Um, okay, I'll just I'll go with my personal story and then yeah, yeah, we'll go from that. Um, so growing up, um, so I had a brother who, who passed away before I was born uh, with, with leukemia. And, um, and basically, that set my parents on, you know, a journey, I, I would say. You know, just, we all have our own journey. Um, and so I grew up with kind of the vitamins on the, on the plate, you know, uh, I did carrot juice when I was super, super young, had no idea. Most 
fruit at that time. I didn't know to mix it with apples and lemon and whatnot. So here I was trying to please my mom and, and chugging down the carrot juice and, and all these kind of natural things or different things that, um, you know, that we may not have done if we didn't have the experiences that we had. Um, and so just trying to, like I said, just set my parents on this path of what else could I have done? What else could I have, you know, um, what else could I have done to, for the future, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's always been ingrained in my, you know, in my mind to, to go more the natural route or go, what can we do? Um, more proactive rather than reactive. And, um, so fast forward along, uh, I did a course, some of you may know Lars Gustafson in, uh, in Calgary. And, um, so I did the, the, the body mind Institute course there to become a, a wellness coach. And really the philosophy behind it is just going back to your, going back to the basics, don't overcomplicate things. Um, and that really resonates with me, just being very simple. So fast forward, my brother uh, called me up. Uh, this was, ooh, I don't know, 14 years ago or, or so. And, um, and he said, I want to get my, get mom and dad an earthing sheet for, for Christmas. And I said, sure, dude, whatever. Cause I had no idea what he was talking about. Uh, I just said, just, just send me the bill. Let me know. Um, and then, uh, we struck up a, a, our family struck up a relationship with Clint Dover's team down in, in the States. And, and, um, and basically we went from there, as they say, the rest is history. The more I learned about earthing, then it just fit into my mentality of getting back to basics and from a whole like the simplest thing is if you think about it, the earth going back to the earth is going back to our roots, you know, um, is kind of the simplest thing that we can, can do. And maybe went on a tangent there, but I, hopefully that someone answers just my story of how I got into this. Um, and just the more I learned about it, the more profound, um, the more profound that it has become for me and seen the testimonials that, uh, that people have, um, and how simple it is. So, yeah. Is there anything that earthing won't help with? Hmm. You know, maybe to phrase it, because uh, I could ask you, what, what does, you know, connecting to the earth, you know, really help one with, you know, maybe yeah. you can approach it from both sides of that equation. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's still, it continues to amaze me of people's feedback. It, every individual is, is so unique, so different. And the, the way that I view health is, um, it's like a wheel, you know, we, our, our health is a wheel. And there's so many spokes to that wheel. And um, so, and it's just the results that you get is independent, is dependent on that person. And um, sorry, I went on to the, yeah. another, another tangent here, but so. The integrity of, of having all those folks, right? So yes. diet is one, exercise is one, and uh, yeah, Absolutely. positive mindset, so on and so forth. Absolutely, they're all, they're all spokes to the wheel. Um, the more that I'm learning about earthing is it is one of those spokes of the wheel. Uh, I'm starting to believe it's more the hub of the whole wheel. It's the foundation of, right. um, to build everything upon and, um, and the results are, are, are pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we remove that hub, uh, a friend of mine, he, he often describes, the most dangerous invention to man, and you, you might want to kind of change that. But he, he says the most dangerous invention to man ever. Can you guess what he says? In this context, he says the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know the angle he's coming from is well, once we had the refrigerator, we thought suddenly we didn't have to ferment our food. Our industrial supply chain of, you know, 365, 24 seven access of food. Well, why ferment your food? Okay, sure, it might taste good every once in a while, but it really played such a functional role in human society. I'm not sure if they ever, you know, stopped and thought about, okay, you know, what other, you know, importance is this playing? 
Uh, and then with refrigeration and so on and so forth, that was a big break in uh, us doing that. And, and then I guess it's just how we learn as humans, right? We go away from uh, what's kind of core and essential to our health. And then we go, oh, oh that wasn't so good. And then we, we start to learn and come back. So as I answered, asked that question, I heard shoes maybe that, <laughs> yeah. so would you say you're at shoes or oh, you're absolutely those? so in the um yeah and clint so clint over was kind of the, the founder of, of of the earthing movement and um and so he, he remembers um telling the story of how he came about is just basically looking at a bunch of people and it's just all their shoes all the shoes and it's it is i would say probably in a, the biggest from the refrigerator one of the biggest uh things that uh that is i would say harmed society in the sense that uh you know yeah with inflammation all the chronic inflammation diseases that you see have started recently and shoes were introduced around the 60s rubber sole shoes were introduced roughly around the 60s and uh, so there's really something going on with all those barefoot hippies yeah. and then the Beatles with rubber sole. Right. Well, yeah, with rubber sole. And that's um, so it's like you said, we're kind of gone. We've gone so far extreme um, with fashion, with style, with shoes and whatnot. And now we're trying to bring, uh, you know, merge the two back and uh, and get back to our roots, get grounded again. Yeah, because so, rubber is an incredible insulator, but in that right we are literally disconnecting ourselves from the earth whereas our feet would otherwise be connected and constant source of free flow of electrons and antioxidants the other thing that's happened uh you know arguably even before the 60s uh but in increasing amounts over the decades is the influence of ems right electromagnetics uh that have a different frequency and a different effect uh than than what you know, natural ones from the earth provide. Absolutely. And the way that I explain it is like EMFs, they're, they're everywhere. Um, they're not going away. Um, that's how we have grown as a society and, and whatnot. Um, but when you're not grounded, those EMFs are allowed to disturb your body. You know, you're, you're basically free floating in space and the, the frequencies of the EMFs will, will disturb the internal workings of your body. Um, once you become grounded, the earth has its own frequency, right? It's, um, well, there's a bunch of different variances of the, of the Schumann residence and, and whatnot. Um, but energetically, when you become grounded, you are now resonating with the earth and you are no longer being perturbed by the, the EMFs, by those outside frequencies. So it's called the umbrella effect. So once you become, uh, once grounded, then those EMFs will go around you rather than internally and disturb yourself at a cellular level. Yeah. And so touching the earth works a whole lot better than stickers on your cell phone. <laughs> you know, those, all those things are great, but yeah. Uh, yeah. How can we utilize that connection to the earth for yeah. things like EMS? Absolutely. Yeah. Is there, I'm just wondering, is there a time period? Like, so you think you were going to walk there with nature and then um, is there a time period that it takes to say, well, I'm grounded? Okay, yeah. excellent. Great, Great question. question. So just going to repeat it for those online. Yeah. Uh, is there a time period uh, that it takes to become grounded? That, that, is that your question? Yeah, right on. And grounding works instantaneously. Um, like electrically, like touching a, um, well, I shouldn't use this, but because you're in no way electrocuting yourself, but where I was going with that is as soon as you touch an electric fence, you feel it. You know, it's, it's, it's happening. Um, so when you touch the earth electrically, it's instantaneous to feel um, the benefits and whatnot. Of course, it varies from person to person. Try to get to do at least 20 to 30 minutes. Um, the more, the better, you know, and that's, um, that's where the, the products come in. But the more, the better. Uh, the only time I would say not to is if you have a little bit of a heating detox. Uh, which we can we can talk about as as well, but um, you know hours if you can sleep through the night being grounded, um, but yeah, minimum twenty to thirty minutes just to get your body um, in tune with it and whatnot. But yeah, 
Yeah. So there's, I think there's a lot of depth to taking that question further. Like how quickly does it take you to get grounded? You know, and the answer is like instant. As soon as like you touch running water through a pipe in your house, as soon as your bare feet are on the, uh, you know, the, the cold grass, wet grass, yeah. when you dive into the ocean, you're instantly grounded. Um, then I guess the second part of that question would be how long would, do those benefits last? And then how long does it take to, as we're going to experiment with some of our folks in the room here, to begin to help with, you know, inflammation, pain, and other things that are going on in the body? Yeah. Well, and yeah, it's, so that's... It's a lot to unpack there. That's, that's, yes. <laughs> There's... Um, hmm. And it probably just depends. I know yeah. when we it's, did, uh, so I was first introduced to uh, grounding to the same man as you, uh, Clint Over. Yeah. Uh, and he was kind of the guy that was just like, okay, you know, we have this healing power source. We can all try and get out and, you know, be in the water or be, be barefoot as much as we can. But how can we more practically bring this into our life, as you say, uh, to have longer periods of contact with the earth? Because, you know, I, as a years of like 19, 20, I literally lived outside uh, under the stars. I hitchhiked around. I slept under cedar trees. I never used a tent. I was literally like always connected to the ground. Yeah. Uh, I never showered except for, <laughs> I really was a dirty hippie. Um, I, really, I only showered like, you know, in, in rivers, lakes and streams. And I remember going through like withdrawals, like every autumn, like around this time of year, it's like, oh, I gotta go back inside. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, now, so this man kind of pioneered technology that can help uh, maintain that connection while we, you know, uh, live inside. And yeah. uh, so we're, we're at an event similar to this where he got people in the audience uh, to, you know, kind of get plugged in, get grounded to the technology. And then he did uh, before and after uh, like tests, like blood cell analysis. And absolutely, there's definite changes in their blood as well as just kind of their own anecdotals like oh yeah it's a little bit better da, da, da. Yeah. so yeah and a, a question for everybody here and and for you at home to to think about is just when is the la unless you're intentional with it when is the last time you've made contact with the earth anybody want to most people like yeah maybe it might be a day because it is still summer but in the winter you know yeah yeah I had to make sure it was dog free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dog free. Okay. So uh, we've got some responses online today. Yeah. About an hour ago, Friday, barefoot in the park. Awesome. Oh, perfect. Yeah. A bit of a cheat. I showered today. So I was grounded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing is, um, you know, with our daily living, most of the time we're not, we are not grounded anymore. Um, so should I explain kind of what, yeah, uh, what these are now and, and just, and yeah. so to help with that, I mean, it's, there's, there's products that Clint Over and his team have developed that allow yourself to be grounded indoors. Um, and you don't have to go walk in, you know, dog filled grass or, or whatnot. And you don't have to worry about stepping in anything. Um, but, um, but I'll just kind of explain that, you know, the, there's products out there that were designed so that you can bring the earth indoors and um, just so that we can be able to, to get those healing benefits while we sleep, while we work at our desk or anything else while we work out, yoga, uh, meditate, anything like that, that we do. So um, I just explain it and then we'll, yeah. then we'll go from there. So, um, so I'm just going to hold this up. Um, so we have a few people that are, you know, grounded right now. And I want first, yeah, okay. The first thing that I will say is that in no way are we using any electricity. I know we're plugged in, um, so but at the same time, we are this, only, yeah, it's, it's not even turned on, uh, but this cord is plugged into a, another grounded, uh, a grounded outlet into your outlet. So what we're doing is through Malcolm's um, building here and our buildings at home, it, came to code around 60s or 70s where grounding your, through your outlets was was to code. And so what we're doing is we're just plugging into the bottom bottom hole. Yes. Uh, so that's the ground port. So there's the electrical portions, which are the two long slits. That's your electricity. 
and no way are we doing using that. What we're doing is just tapping into the ground. Uh, and the first thing that I did before I plugged anybody in here is just plug that in to make sure oh, it's not on. So just to make sure that it is grounded properly and we're not plugging into anything that we don't want to. So that's that in a sense. And basically those cords go to a, a conductive product and then you're able to, uh, for the ones that are sitting here, able to be grounded as they're sitting here, or um, you can put some, uh, a conductive product on your bed so that you can sleep. That's kind of what I love about earthing. One is it's free uh, to go outside and do it. It's free, but if you want those benefits indoors, then the best way to do it is through healing and repair while you sleep. And that's, I have the rotisserie guy in my mind where you just put on your bed, you set it and you forget it. You don't have to worry about anything. It's probably one of the easiest things and the most impactful things that you can do to, um, to get the benefits of, of earthing. So does anybody have any questions so far that I can, yeah. So why are you Okay, so for you at home is uh, the question is what if you can or can you just take some wires, run them um, outside and into your bed. So yes, you can do that. And that's actually how Clint over started is through uh, a conductive tape. Uh, and then he ran a wire through uh, to the ground. Now, legally, I can't say that just in terms of, because we're, um, you know, um, but yes, you, you can say that. I just can't recommend it legally, but yes, absolutely you can do that because it's just taking a conductive from the ground to your bed, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Well, the ground is um, so. What's your question? Oh, sorry. So coming through, uh, you know, yeah, quite a quite a true statement. There's so much Wi-Fi out there, right? Especially if you live downtown, you're in an apartment. You look at all the different, uh, you know, signals that are out there. I mean, sometimes it's fifty long. You know, it's unbelievable. So yeah. Um, yeah, how do how does one get around that with it just being in the air or picking it up? That was kind of your question, it like how you making yeah. sure that's not traveling through and coming through to yeah, yeah. And so the um, the way that the, the ground is so massive, you know, and once you become grounded and resonate with the earth, then again you're no longer perturbed by those by those frequencies. So the the Wi-Fi signals doesn't travel through the the ground. Um, and so once you become grounded, um, then you won't be disturbed by those, by those Wi-Fi. So obviously my first, you know, way that we want to do it is if you can avoid avoidance is always the, the best when you come with EMFs, but as we know with today's technology, it's not, uh, you can't, <laughs> unless you're live like Malcolm did back in the day and, and go and, uh, yeah. And uh, so the best thing I do now is uh, I've got my Wi Fi router on a timer. So it like switches off every single night. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to like go do it because it's kind of in the farthest part of my house. It's on a timer. And I think we have it set for like 1130. You know, not that I sometimes every once in a while I'm working. Like the other night I was working till two and I had to kind of like mm -hmm. override that. But yeah. otherwise, that's like an absolute cutoff. Uh, and then it shuts off and then it's like it's just pops right back on in the morning and you just set your timer and it's on and off. And then, you know, you can't really do that much about your neighbors, but uh, at least for your own, which is going to have the most direct signal, minimizes that uh, for yourself. And then if you've got the bed and I just wanted to share a comment here uh that someone so fred said uh they made a grounding mat copper mesh that he has under his computer desk so it sounds like there can be some creative yeah. uh <laughs> work at home projects yeah. uh, like this as well yeah absolutely um and by all means i if you can do it then please do you know so yeah yeah to get those benefits yes so once you ground it how long does that take for good question Okay, so uh, the question is kind of how long is, is the grounding good for? Um, so going back 
you want to be grounded as much as possible. Um, if you go back to, you know, just the way that we're meant to be is barefoot on the ground for most of our, most of our day. And, uh, you know, you can go sleeping underneath the, the tree at night. So the more, the better that you can get once you do, it does have a cumulative effect. Um, but you do want to continuously do it as much as possible. So if you do it for five minutes and then you stop, then the grounding stops those antioxidants here the inflow of the electrons stop um and so just yeah that's part of what we want to do is make it a, a part of the lifestyle um so that you can do it as much as possible and yeah. could i say that maybe while those moments while you're grounded let's say you get like a good full eight hours of yep. being grounded like some healing and repair happens in the body Absolutely. but so five minutes may not get you very much but at least provides kind of a, a break you know from the barrage of yes. uh, frequencies and the longer you are in that state the more that builds up absolutely yeah, yeah. so uh, the electrons that are going into your body um the number one thing that helps is to reduce inflammation. Um, and so, and that has a cumulative effect. So if anybody has kind of like, an, you can't have um, pain without inflammation. So once you neutralize that inflammation, um, then your body's gonna be able to um, just deal with it a little bit better. Then you're gonna be able to sleep a little bit better. It also regulates your hormones. So you will, again, sleep better. That has a cumulative effect, right? And whether it takes one person one week to notice the difference, uh, or if it takes, you know, three months to six months, it depends on, on that person. Um, but those accumulations of, of the healing and repair that is allowed to happen, um, it builds up over time. So, yeah. And I think uh, you had shared a story that I totally resonated with, uh, where oftentimes you'll notice when you're not grounded, you know, in particular mm -hmm. sleeping. So I've, I've got a sheet that I sleep on that's grounded. Feels great. I have good sleep, yep. you know, but then if I'm like, ah, oh, traveling, I forgot, or I'm not mm -hmm. the wrong like cord or something. Yep. And it's like, oh, I don't have that, you know, and then yep. I'll notice it in that way more than I will. It's just a good sleep is, is what I enjoy, fortunately, uh, yep. every night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. So how does these grounding bed bedding work? Into the outlet somehow, or how does it work? Yep. Okay. Start. Yeah. How does the the grounding sheets or bedding work? Okay. So um, same way. So all the products work the same way. Um, in the sense that you 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 test your outlet, make sure it's grounded, and then you can then you use a, a cord, plug it into your ground port, and that travels to a conductive product. That um, that is conductive that you sleep on, and then um, and then as soon as you touch it, then you're grounded, and that's it. Yeah. So um, so whether you have so this for example is a uh, a mat that you can use at your at your desk, and then this is a conductive surface. It's a carbon infused. You snap the cord on here, and then just touch the mat, and then you're grounded. And you can use this in bed as well, but there's different products that uh, are more designed for convenience in the bed um, or at your workstation or whatnot. So, you have to be barefoot. So that's a good question. Do you have to be barefoot? Um, skin contact is best, and um, with some of the sleep products, then you can you have a a natural cotton sheet is best, and your body pressure and moisture will make a connection through your sheet. So, or if you have socks and if you have, your feet will warm up and the moisture. So if you have really thick socks, I wouldn't recommend that, but thin cotton socks or just a thin layer uh, of material is fine. Um, but I will say skin contact is always, is always best. And how do you know when your product's not working? Good question. So that's what this guy is for. So the question was, how do you know if it's not working anymore? Um, so this is called a continuity tester. And it's a great little tool to be able to, because the products, everything is not, it's not electricity, right? So there's no on off switch. There's no way to know. Um, so what we have is a, a continuity tester and can you demonstrate that now? Yeah, yeah. That's great. 
So I'll just, I'll, okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to, you know, hold that up and then I can, yeah. so I'm going to plug the tester into a, a ground port. So now this tester is now grounded. And then, you know what I'll do? I'm just going to get, did you just want to, so just touch this silver disc on the back. And it turns green in the sense that now we know that she's grounded and this is grounded. So it's creating a, a continuity. So, if, so when I touch it, I'm not grounded at the moment. Okay. If I hold her hand, then now I'm grounded too. Okay. So we are all, all electrical beings. And so if everybody held hands right now, because they're, they're grounded, um, then everybody, everybody in this room would be grounded. Does that makes sense. Okay? okay. All right. Just do a little demonstration for, the, oh, sure. for uh, those online as well. Okay. So Malcolm just plugged in the, this mat. And so I'm going to. So you're touching just, it. Nothing's so going I'm touching on this, But I'm going to just touch the mat. Uh, if you could see that. Light goes on. Light goes on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Simple enough, okay. And so, to answer the question is, how do you know it's not working? Then these, um, the continuity tester does a great job of just giving you that peace of mind that it does work. Uh, and a lot of people know it's not working because then they'll start feeling their ailments back. Um, things don't, they don't start sleeping as well, and some aches and pains that maybe have gone away will start coming back. So. All right, I've got a question online here. Uh, if you go barefoot on concrete, do you get any grounding benefits or must it be the earth? What do we think? Concrete, are you gonna ground it? I don't think so. Don't think so? Okay, yes, we're divided and it's about half and half. Mm -hmm. what, what do you say? It's a trick question. Um, <laughs> so now concrete itself actually is conductive as long as it's laid on the earth. Um, and as long as it's not, if we're gonna talk about basements, because most of us have, will have a concrete basement, uh, as long as it's not painted, then the, because um, the, the paint will act as an insulator and you won't be able to get grounded through there. So, and depending on the, the paint as well. But concrete laid, um, as long as it's laid on the earth, which most of it is, then you will be grounded. Yep. All right, what about uh, like a road, asphalt? Asphalt, no. Um, I don't know the inner workings of asphalt, but I know that it does not. Yeah, it's it does got not like grounded. oil and tar and things in like that. So yeah. that's obviously a, yeah, a block. Yeah. There's one that I uh, also just, in case somebody's finished their basement, in case, uh, you know, dead of winter, you want to get grounded, uh, you have a newer home, and because then you have plastic pipes, you're not sure whether things are grounded. This one I learned recently, um, but your furnace. So the tin in the furnace, oh, no because it goes down, um, okay. it's laid into the concrete or it's formed into the concrete. Um, so if you just, you know, have your coffee sitting beside the, um, <laughs> your, with your hands, with your hand on the tin of the, uh, the furnace. Very practical, and, uh, yeah. But then taking that even further, again, maybe not practical, but um, you know, you've got to do what you got to do. If, For sure. if you're going to see some benefits to this, the, um, it's warm down there, it, it's warm down there <laughs> as well as, um, so that tin is connected through to your vents, right. Ah. And it, the tin itself is, is, uh, right. conductive. So if you open up your vents, what do you see? You see that sharp tin, right. That, that blows all the air through your vents. So if you take your vent out and you touch that tin on the inside of your vent, that is grounded as well. Okay. Yeah. And then I suppose, you know, you could either buy or rig up some sort of cord like this that's conductive and then bring it to a spot where you sit or something like that. Absolutely. So you're not just sitting with your hand in the vent. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can do that. Yeah, for sure. Have you, have you used that little device to actually turn that? Yes. Yourself? Yes. Oh. So have I confirmed that myself and, and used the, uh, the continuity tester to test that? Uh, yes. I did, and that's that's how I found out about it because I um, can't remember what I was doing. But then I touched something while I was holding that, and I was like, "Oh, 
Interesting. So, and then I took it a little further. So, yeah. Yeah. It's almost for certain that your house is grounded, but there are tools, you know, this or electricians have tools to kind of test each uh, outlet. Um, but this is really kind of something unique to earthing yes. uh, the company that they've developed this kind of meter to, as a gauge. Yep. Now, well, I just want to build on that one last question because Kathy yep. was asking recommendations for grounding in winter if one can't afford the sheets or mats. And anything else that you want to share or build on that? I know um, uh, everybody's into Wim Hoffing, you know, like just get outside. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, and the, okay, so here's there's another great just in terms of uh, snow is more of an insulator, um, oh, which, is, which is neat in the sense ice because it's so compact. Um, Ice will be grounded as long as it's on the earth. Um, but I would, I would say probably the basement is your best bet. Right. Um, if you have an older, older home, then um, find a copper cold water pipe and you can make something up with that. And um, that's all that I can think about at, at the moment. Yeah. yeah, showers, lots of showers. <laughs> all right. <laughs> To say you know, hearing or sight, for example, like you hear rustling in the leaves, or like oh. all the energy to that as well, or like the sight of the sun, you know, like yeah, totally. Sun is then also have very common effects. So I'm just wondering if drowning can have to do with sight and also hearing, but just touching. Great question. Okay, very cool. So, question was, can we get a grounding? experience uh, via other senses like seeing uh, a sunset or hearing rustling in the trees which yeah very clear i totally agree have have yeah. a healing effect but it, is it grounding in in our sense of in what we're discussing then then it's no um not physically grounding because there is you know uh, through yoga and whatnot they talk about being grounded um more as a practice of maybe not meditation, but um, yeah, a state of mind, a state of mind and, and yeah. whatnot. While those things are super beneficial um, from a vibration, from an energy standpoint um, and frequency standpoint from the earth, getting the physical connection of the, those electrons from the earth to, to reduce the inflammation um, a little bit different, but, yeah, but just as important for sure. Cool. You can use the card to move. Oh yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, well, let's test that out. Yeah. Yep. Relating to that question, what exactly above the earth causes the grounding of the dirt? But because I'm just wondering if things that come from the earth, like rocks or something, right? They totally. Ground the ah. On the ground. Oh, I love that question. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So what is it about the earth that provides that grounding? And I love that question of like, would it, you know, I'm going to paraphrase, but could a rock that you just literally picked up from the earth, could that be like a battery of sort, you know, emitting the same type of uh, energy? That's a great question. It, it, um, I don't know if it would store any, like if you pick the rock up, whether it would store any, you know, energy and whatnot, and it would, it would lose it. But the earth is a, is a battery and the earth, it's actually through lightning that the earth is recharged with the electrons. So it's continuously um, recharged with it. And it's actually like the lightning that gives it the, the electrons and gives it that electric charge. Um, and, um, but rocks, as long as they're conductive and as long as they're in contact with the earth, with the soil, with, with the ocean, with anything, then they will be uh, rocks are depending on the rock. And I'm not a geologist, so I can't say, but I have tested different ones. Um, limestone, not so much, um, but like a solid um, granite, granite, granite. Yeah, then those will be, I believe granite. I'd have to get back to you on that one. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Because <laughs> granite is sealed, so then right. like, yeah, anyways. Okay, you had a question? Um, like if you had a whole long line of connections would it be weaker than just touching it oh great question so question. you know a whole long line of connections or or even just this technology you know yep. is it weaker than being direct or is it diffused over a long period of time gotcha good question very good question so the way that so electrically it happens in an instant like as the speed of light so once you connect somebody, then the speed of light, you are electrically grounded. 
Now, from the, the electron flow, um, getting the, the antioxidants to your body, those work through point of contact. Now, which means, you know, if you're grounded and then you have to, then you have a long line of people at the end, the how long it takes, don't know how long it would take for those electrons to flow and be at the last person. But the last person would be electrically grounded instantaneously, but to receive the electrons, the, uh, the antioxidants, there's no way to test, don't know. But, um, but it, would be, it would be fairly quick. Cool, very interesting. So do we have options for shoes? You know, say barefoot or not rubber, but yeah, yeah. Can we have shoes? Okay, what about shoes? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great, great question. Uh, footwear. And maybe, maybe can you start with, uh, you know, obviously rubber soles coming in the 60s. Like, what were people using before, even the Indigenous people? Yeah. And, and were those grounded or not? Yep. So the Indigenous were using uh, leather soled shoes. So that would conduct the, uh, the energy. And that's what. Um, and it doesn't the, matter on like how thick it is, or does it have to have a little bit of moisture to it? That's a good question. Uh, I'm not too sure and how thick, but once the moisture is present, which it would, once you start walking, we all know how, how our feet get when, we, <laughs> when we're walking in, in closed shoes. But um, yeah, it, it would be fairly quick, especially with leather. And, um, and then, yeah, once the shoes kind of came in, then, then they did. But there are more shoes coming now. Um, it's becoming grounding is becoming a concept and there are different options out there that um are starting to come i haven't done them all or whatnot but um there are a few and and i have um well who are you wearing some right i'm now? wearing some right now and so basically they are um just just a flip-flop if i know if flip-flops may not be everybody's jam but basically uh, what they've done is, is run a conductive strip uh, through here that goes down to a little bit dirty here, goes down to the bottom. And then so it's just a conductive strip that allows me. So when I am walking outside uh, on a conductive surface, then I can be grounded. Um, so I'm not grounded when I'm standing just on a regular floor. You're not grounded wearing them. You have to be touching a earth or touching a conductive grounded product. But um, hopefully that answers your question, but there, there's more, if you um, look online, there, there's more that are coming out now. Yeah, there's a lot of like minimalist shoe companies that are start to adopt this. Most of it is in kind of like sandal type of footwear. Like I've seen some beautiful like women's sandals and they have little uh, copper divots through them. So that you're, you know, it's creating that connection between your foot to the earth through the through the shoe yeah but uh, i've yet to see like winter boots or you know like yeah running shoes or anything like yeah. that to that level yeah. but hey this is this is uh you know humans and our our innovation and uh i'm sure it's going to happen so some, sometimes if you go there there's still people selling the the leather sole um like true moccasins style and and as long as they don't have um you know a bunch of insulated insulation at layers. the bottom of your foot layers yeah. then um, then you will be grounded through as long as it's true leather. Um, but yeah, you just, they're going for comfort now, which, which I totally get. And, um, but anyways, yeah. yeah. So do all shoes work like that? You have to be walking inside on them and work inside on them. So, so yes. So the question is all shoes, all grounding, all grounding shoes like all earthing shoes yeah yes yes you do have to be um, on a conductive surface on a conductive surface you have to make the whole the whole principle is is being in contact to the earth somehow um and so you would need to i would need to be standing on a grounded product right now um or outside on concrete or in the basement yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Shoots counteract the effects of hugging the tree, or gotcha. Yeah, is it better to be barefoot and hugging the tree? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the question is, is it better to, when hugging a tree, is it better to um, take your shoes off 
Um, and the simple answer is no, once you're, because you're still connected to the tree, as long as you make some sort of physical connection to the tree, uh, having shoes on at that point doesn't matter. Um, so even if you're sitting on the ground, same idea, like five. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're, as long as you don't have thick pants on, you know, I mean, if you want to sit in the park in your, in your skivvies, then, then <laughs> go ahead. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm sure it has. Um, but, and another thing about a tree, it depends on the tree as well, because the bark uh, sometimes is more of an insulator. So it depends on the tree. Um, what I try to do is, is just grab a, just gently touch a leaf, you know, just a little bit. And, and that will, um, that's a more guaranteed way of, of getting grounded when, when hugging a tree is, uh, is just touch the green leaves. Yeah, but I think it kind of relates to that other question you had before here, you know, there's there's an energy from the tree that's also going to be absolutely shared. Different yeah. than grounding? Yeah, I did a bo podcast and um, with Chantel, she was saying just the release that she got when hugging a tree. There's something energetically, there's something it might oh, yeah. sound like hippies, but uh, yeah, same sense. It's own it. you own it. That's right. Um, it uh, there's something to it for sure. That uh, from an energetic standpoint, I challenge anybody, and I still um, I need to do it. But um, give it a try. Cool. Yeah. All right. So a couple other questions here. We'll kind of keep going back and forth. So what about PEMF mats? I assume you know what that is. Uh, I've heard you may only need to use it eight minutes, two times per day. Gotcha. So the PEMF pulse electromagnetic frequency uh, okay. mats. Right. Um, I don't know them in depth. I, I'm not too familiar with them, um, but I know that they are more of an electric product that output a, a frequency of some sort that, yeah. and that that's all that I can really say on it. Um, from the electrical standpoint, you're not getting the, the electrons from the earth. Um, but I have heard, you know, positive re reviews on them. So, I mean, it, uh, it's just a little bit different than, than, than earthing. And, um, but I can't speak too much about because my knowledge is limited on those. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I, Okay, I'm not going to add too much about that either. Uh, can you ground uh, from indoor plants or anything living such as that during the winter? So this kind of goes back to our tree hugging question. Yeah, yeah, good, good question. Um, so energy from the plants, but not grounded. Right. So yes, energy from the plant, um, but you won't be grounded if you touch your plants. And I would, um, I would urge anybody to, who has indoor plants um, to ground them. And you can you can rig something up of just basically um, sticking a, a wire from the earth into the dirt and uh, of your plant. And uh, there's a couple. There's a lot of you know experiments and stuff like that of how well plants do when they're grounded versus not grounded because uh, the plants are meant to be in the earth. Um, another sense of so just coming to the top. If anybody does gardening. Um, like outdoors, then gardening is a great, get your hands in there, get your, you know, bare feet when you're gardening. It is, uh, it is a great source of uh, birthing. So, yes. And you're just thinking about blocks. Yep. Crystals and gemstones. Gotcha. So the, the question is crystals and gemstones. Is that um, a form of grounding, a form of earthing? So uh, I'm gonna say it's probably, it's the same as the trees energetically, Great, and I, I'm not well versed in, in the crystals and whatnot. Um, but if they're not in direct contact with the earth itself, um, then you won't be receiving the benefits as we are talking about today. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Can you use pendants like bio life to help you stay grounded? Okay. So, same. Um, so energetically, again, would be great, um, but not grounded. So the anything that we do or that we're talking about today, it has to be some way touching the earth or in physical contact with the earth. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. What other questions? 
from here, from this group. When you're talking about sticking the wire outside of the garden and then sticking it in your indoor plants, what kind of, is it just what kind of wire? Is it just going from dirt to dirt? Yeah, the best kind of wire, if you're gonna try and transfer outside or even inside earth energy, you know, that's coming through the ground, it would be copper, I would assume. Yeah. Is the most yeah. conductive yeah. and probably cost effective. You could use silver wire, but it'd be more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Are there any other metals that uh, that have that uh, conductive capability? Uh, Copper, steel, silver. Yep, and steel, stainless steel. Right. Um, and those are the only ones that that I really have, right. have worked with and whatnot. So, um, on that note. Um, so you mentioned a little bit about the grounding sheets. I've got one of those at home. And yep. the original models were a silver thread. So it was like a yep. silver thread, like kind of woven through the, the sheet. Yep. Is that how they're still made? No, so those, um, they've gone, uh, gone to a different, uh, different style. And um, so this is just kind of a, an example of something that's, that would go on the bed. Um, so it's, it's more of a, it's a, carbon infused leatherette. So oh, okay. basically it's, um, so it's just, it's pretty supple. And um, so for those who can see it, and this is called the, this is the half sheet or a half um, sleep mat. And uh, so it just goes on the half, half of your bed. It's got the straps to go around your mattress to hold it in place and you just lay down, plug it in, lay down, go to sleep and whatnot. So they've gone away from the silver, just in the sense that, um, for the most part, if anybody has oils and whatnot, lotions, then the silver will oxidize. So that's kind yeah. of the reason that I've gone to this for is a little bit more, a little bit more durable user friendly. Yeah, right. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Are you going to stick directly on that or can you still put bed sheets on? So the question is, can I use, put bed sheets on top of this? Um, so yes, you can put bed sheets on top of that. Uh, cotton is best and just a thin layer. So I'm gonna say if you wear full pajamas, then I would sleep directly on that. Um, and then if you have, you know, minimal pajamas, then yeah, then a thin cotton sheet would be best. And then again, your, the, the weight uh, and then the moisture that your body will, uh, it doesn't need much, but that'll, it'll make a connection through there. Yeah. So I Grounded even if there's, even no, if there's power no power. At all, like, good question. Yeah, yeah, good question. So, question was, and we'll use this as a demonstration. Uh, that's cool. You like shut the power off to your whole bedroom at night. <laughs> that's great. Right. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And, he said the power still comes right to that outlet. Yeah. Exactly. So by turning the power off, there's no dirty electricity at all. Yeah. Right? So, cool. That, that, that's a great principle to share. Um, is that any outlet uh, has an electrical current going to it, and if you've got a lamp plugged in or an alarm clock or anything that's plugged, then that electrical current follows through the cord. And even if the lamp's not on, if the cord is going up halfway up to the lamp. There's an electrical field because of that current, and that can affect us as a biological living system. So, right on you. You just shut the power down uh, to your your whole uh, bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very cool. Nightly routine. Yeah. Um, so, if you're doing that, you know, do you, can you still access the grounding energy from a room that's kind of disconnected electrically? And the answer is yes. So you, you still will be grounded. Um, yeah, and that won't stop. Yeah, yeah. So even if you have no power, even if your you know whole power of the house is is out, um, then the grounding still will work. Yeah. 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 So here's here's my question. I I think I'd heard this before, and I want you to clarify. Um, I mean, I haven't traveled in a long time, uh, for, but I look forward to the day that uh, that's coming up soon. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. when I used to international travel, you know, that type of thing, um, you know, it can be hard, jet lag. You know, yes. I've got family in, in the UK, eight mm -hmm. hours difference. Uh, I had heard one of the absolute best things to kind of reset your circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. you travel, 
you take your shoes off as soon as you land, you ground. Uh, and I've even heard this principle and it makes sense from another perspective of long road trips. You're driving in the car, you know, first thing, get out, like ground. It kind of, my understanding, at least for the driving, it kind of like discharges that uh, positive energy, yeah. which is negative. Uh, yeah. So it allows you to do that. But then what's the deal with uh, time zones and our circadian rhythm and connecting to the earth? Yeah, so the, the, uh, just going back to um, just saying like the frequency of the earth, the earth resonates at a certain at frequencies. And when you go to the other side of the, pretty much the other side of the earth, then it, it's on a different frequency, essentially. It's, it's, you know, it's daytime or it's nighttime. And so when you touch the earth in a different time zone, or as soon as you get off the plane, it resets it now attunes your body to that space. Right. So a lot of people, a lot of people just very, um, you know, you can read the testimonials and whatnot of how it just resets their body where some people take, you know, a week or two to reset uh, or get in tune with where they are because they, their sleep is all messed up. If they go travel, you know, eight hours on the plane, um, it's pretty instantaneous for a lot of people of 15, 20 minutes, just to, just to reset their bodies. Uh, and get them in tune with it. So this is so, phenomenal for anybody a, that travels, but if, if it's your work, right? You're a pilot, you're a stewardess, anything yep. like that. It's like a major power to tap into. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So anybody grounding the car, like the Right, good question. Yeah, what yeah. about the car? Yeah, the guarding. So, uh, so there is one product that's, that you don't plug in and that is the auto seat mats. So you cannot, because you're on four tires, um, Unfortunately, you're insulated, but when you're driving in the car, there is a lot of static buildup, which, which is disturbing to your body uh, when you have a positive charge on your body. Um, so there are grounding mats that you can clip um, basically to the under seat of your car or on, uh, underneath your seat, the metal clippings. And it just basically helps to discharge uh, that static from, from the body. But there is no way to be grounded to the earth while you drive. Even those strips on the back, you know, on the vehicle. Um, unfortunately, when you're going 100K down, the, it doesn't make a, and, and you're driving on asphalt, which is not a conductive surface anyway. So, right. um, so unfortunately you won't be able to, to ground. Yeah. So what are you clicking on and is it inside under your seat or is it under the car? Uh, under your seat, so inside the car. Uh, so you put like a smaller version of, smaller version of this mat uh, mm -hmm. and you just sit on it and then enough if you're in the car for long enough oh, so then, you actually sit on it, not right so okay. you sit on it and then the cord would run through the back of the seat and then clip onto the a metal frame or something metal but underneath your seat is you know what the, the seat sits on is, is a metal frame and then you just clip onto that and basically it's like you ever rubbed your sock feet along the carpet and then you touch the doorknob and you get a big spark right big shock so you're continuously, you're, it's like you're holding the doorknob constantly. So that static is not allowed to build up on your body. So it's continuously discharging. Uh, a lot of semi drivers actually have uh, noticed a huge benefits. They drive the most, obviously. Um, and so, uh, so, yeah, it's uh, okay. that's the link. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, just a comment. I, I've been really sensitive to the electricity on my leg. As a kid, I couldn't, I could hardly be in the car without getting sick yeah. um, because of the exact level of the tension here. And he, I don't know what metal it was, but he attached a metal chain to a metal contact uh -huh. the back. And then, so it actually went down to the room and was a little bit longer. And he, he put two, two or three of them. Like he tried all of them. Really? Finally, that helped. And that continued until I was like, oh, wow. Eventually, he went. Awesome. Even today, I still have all of them. Yeah. So electro, electro sensitive? Then? Yeah. 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 And that's, um, you're hearing a, a lot more people, you know, are, are um, electrically sensitive. So, uh, I will say, if you do ground, um, go slow. You'll be you'll be pretty sensitive to it. Um, 
and so just go slow with it and, and work your way into it. Um, but it will be powerful for you. Same concept in RC for Yeah. Oh, um, okay. oh, sorry. Cool. Same same concept uh, on an aircraft. Um, again. Yeah. Wi -Fi. Right. So not from a Wi-Fi standpoint, unfortunately. Um, right. And um, but from the micro movements of the plane and, and everything on there, there is going to be a static buildup. Um, so if you can touch something metal. Um, just to discharge that static continuously. Yeah, yeah, or maybe not be that person who sticks your bare foot up on somebody's seat or something like that. But we all know, we've all probably been on a plane where you got to find somebody like that. But anyways, uh, something touch, just touch something that, that's it, yeah. And if you can do it continuously, comfortably, then do that or every, every so often just discharge that static. I, well, as long, yeah, so clothing, um, so in the car, when you're sitting on a, uh, on the, on the mat, then um, as long as you're not wearing ski pants, you know, one layer of clothing, you'll be sitting there long enough and there'll be enough pressure to, um, you know, to be able to get that conductiveness through there. Cool. All right. Well, um, okay. There's one question here that might kind of shift into a nice little close here. Uh, yeah. When Kurt uh, agreed to, to show up and share, uh, it was kind of out of my, uh, you know, interest of wanting to kind of yeah, share about, about earthing, both, both the natural ways uh, that we all can and do in terms of, yeah, just being aware that as soon as we're in the shower, we're getting that grounding energy. When we're outside barefoot or, you know, any contact to surfaces to earth, uh, first and foremost, that is the best. That's amazing. There are benefits we can get from that. And then second to that, there's more that this kind of practical, tangible, how can we get grounded uh, in, in our everyday? And uh, so Kurt runs a company uh, called Earthing Canada, and he's a distributor for these products that are being created out of the U.S. Uh, called Earthing. That's the brand, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so the union and ground therapy. Yeah, our thing in ground therapy. So uh, it's an Alberta-based company. Everything ships out of Edmonton. Uh, so maybe just share a little bit about how people can get. So because that was a question online. Yeah, where where can we buy the mats yeah. uh, for the cars? Yeah. So uh, website is earthingcanada.ca, um, and uh, and you can find anything on there. And I will say for everybody here and and online, um, when you go to the website, there is they've done an amazing job with uh, a movie. It's called the Earthing Movie. Uh, it's about an hour long, so if you, if you can, there's, um, they've done a really profoundly good job of kind of explaining earthing. Um, they go more into the, the benefits um, than what we can, you know, I have to watch what I say, <laughs> right. you know, in, in terms of health claims and, and all that fun stuff. Um, but uh, you'll be able to, I would just spend an hour and, and watch that. Um, yeah, we should actually bring up that point. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about Health Canada, which is in the way of everything. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so recently, why don't you share the story? What, what's been going on? Yeah, so the, um, anyways, yeah, it's um, Health Canada kind of saw that there was some health claims and it's, it's all under um, everything that we've said and whatnot there is a ton well clint over has put in millions of dollars into research so everything is is backed up um there's a ton of research and, and whatnot studies and um but we have to watch what we say in terms of health claims because it is not a health canada medical it's not a medical device right so um so they didn't like that so at the sense we you know, on the website you can't i can't say a lot of things that uh people have shared with me and, and what the research says, I have to kind of just point them towards you know, that anyway. So, um, so they made it a little difficult to get some, uh, some product in, but um, it's getting, we're, able, getting we're right. able to do that now. So yeah, yeah. anyways, but yeah. with anything good, you'll have 
some resistance. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost like you know you're onto something when, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the books. books. Yeah. yeah. So uh, books, there is a book. Uh, it's called uh, Earthing. Earthing. Yeah. Yep. And um, <laughs> imagine that. Um, but yeah, there is a book. It's called Earthing. And uh, it's on, um, well, just connect with me through the website and uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, I don't think I have it for sale on the website, but it is um, it is available in a lot of areas. So just connect with me through the through the website if you want a copy of the book. Yeah, so maybe what I'll do, uh, I'll send this recording out to everybody tomorrow, a uh, link to your website. Um, do you mind sharing your email? We can do sure. that. Yep, yep. Whatever, um, whatever email you want to give us. Yeah, the best one is, is info. So I-N-F-O at earthingcanada.ca. Yeah. So, All right. That's that. Cool. Um, also just wanted to, the ones who have been Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Um, just in terms, uh, and just how you feel and whatnot. Is there any any benefits? Is there any anything that you notice? Is there any warmth? Is there any tingling? Is there any um, reduction of pain? Yeah. There is. Yeah. Calm. Yeah. Um, it's probably one of the biggest things is state of mind. Um, you know, reading testimonies of people who are on the brink of of suicide and and in depression and what everything has done for them in terms of their mental state like you just said calm and at peace um connect to so your mother connect to your mother yeah. <laughs> yep yep so yeah so i noticed um right away a change in my pain so yeah um, it's not gone yep. i did notice twice so quite early on and on and then a little while in again and then change yeah, awesome. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Good. Good. Pain is reduced as well. Great. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, that's, that's the best way to put it. Yeah. She feels alive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. More vibrant. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we wanted to kind of just, you know, it was Kurt's idea just to do more of like a informal Q and A, just kind of see, let you guys direct where we went with this information. Um, so I hope you've, you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we'll send a little follow up, and if there's any other questions, uh, Kurt's not going anywhere. You're welcome to chat with him. I'll hop in the store. I'll open up the door so you can leave. And if you need to grab anything, then it's it's available as well. So thanks so much for your time, Kurt. Thank you very much. I yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.